Good afternoon. Thank you for taking time to join uh, our QCDR webinar number eight. Uh, we are going to begin shortly. We see a number of you are still logging in. Let's just cover a few housekeeping items. Uh, everyone is joining the webinar in listen-only mode. We do encourage you to stay active and engaged throughout today's presentation. Feel free to send any questions via the question um, and chat feature on the right-hand side of your screen. Additionally, we have made available one handout for anyone who is interested in uh, learning more about the QCDR process. We have uploaded our participation checklist um, just as a simple reminder of all the steps that need to be completed before we can submit your PQRS measures to CMS. And so let, why not we just go ahead and get started? So what we will cover today, we will um, go over the 2016 reporting requirements for using a QCDR. That should be a reminder for those who have joined the call today. We'll look at the QCDR timeline for CMS submission. That's a hot item of when is data, you know, needs to be into the ACR. Uh, I've gotten several questions regarding that this week. And then also we'll look at the QCDR measures that are available as well as the data submission mechanisms. And then we will look at tips and resources for successful submission of measures to CMS. Um, part of today's lecture, we will only go through a very few slides, and then we're going to try to have at least more than 30 minutes available for question and answers. At that time, um, at the end of the presentation, you can raise your hand or you can type in your question. If you raise your hand, we can actually unmute your line and go ahead and, and hear any feedback you have as well as additional questions. So starting off with the reporting requirements, this is just a reminder, physicians and group practices do have an opportunity to decide if you want to report as an individual or if you want to report as a G-Pro. Everyone on the, if you are reporting as a G-Pro, you are aware of that that's how your group has decided to report for the 2016 year. Um, essentially, across uh, both either individual or group reporting, everyone is trying to achieve at least nine quality measures across three NQS domains. Um, and at least two of those out, um, PQRS measures must be outcomes. If an outcome is not available, there are additional measures that you can report. And then the caveat is that it has to be at least 50% of all your patients seen during the year. Of course, that means um, patients that are attributed or applicable to the PQRS measure that you're trying to report. And also, we collect all payer data, so that's both Medicare and non-Medicare patients. You're at the point of you using a in an effort to avoid uh, reporting. Those payment adjustments range anywhere from a negative 2 to negative 4% um, across CMS quality programs for PQRS and the value modifier. So here's what's at the top of everyone's minds because it's the end of the year. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions about if data is actually due by December 31st. We understand that you know, practices are submitting a number of measures, and so we we actually want to be sure that we include that content today so everyone is aware. If you are submitting um, any PQRS measures and non-PQRS measures, our deadline to have all your quality data to the QCDR is January 31st, 2017. Please be mindful that um, those who are using the Dose Index Registry we do ask that you try to give us as much as your CT, 
of your CT exams by December 31st, 2016. There is some flexibility in that deadline, but it will make your life a lot easier um, if you're thinking about um, checking those rates now. Additionally, the next date is February 19th. Uh, we will, at that time, we will ask all sites to review and attest to the accuracy of the data that you submitted January 31st. And during that time, you will also select measures. I'm going to point out on this slide, it's very important that physicians and or your facility administrators have a bulk of responsibilities or action items between the date ranges of January 31st and February uh, the 19th. These three bullets here on your screen, these are some of the main action items that you're going to be doing. So I'm getting a lot of questions of, okay, I'm submitting my data, what else do I need to do? So we're going to go through that now. You must review your 2016 performance rates on your QCDR measures. That's both PQRS and non-PQRS measures. You must select measures to be submitted and provide information on your total relevant exams performed for those measures. It's very important that you verify that we have the correct and accurate exam count because we will use that to calculate your reporting rate and your performance rates. And that's that's what will be delivered to CMS. And then lastly, you must confirm that all your measures um, that, you, that you intend CMS to see, you need to select all of them, and then authorize ACR to submit measures to CMS. If you do not authorize ACR to submit your measures, we, we will not do that. Um, so most of these action items are handled in our physician portal. And most of you on the phone may be aware of that physician portal. If you're not, we can um, discuss any questions you have about that um, as we get to the end of this presentation. The last two items is related to payment. Uh, to the total cost for participating in the QCDR, we do have a PQRS reporting fee of $199 for ACR members and $499 for non-ACR members. That's a one-time uh, annual uh, reporting fee, and it is uh, per physician per year. If you read for multiple tax IDs, you will not be charged more than once. And then lastly, the goal that we're trying to reach is we're trying to submit, us as the QCDR, we're trying to submit all your complete data to CMS by March 31st of 2017. I spent a little time on that slide, but I, I get several questions about the deadlines, and so I just wanted to be sure that everyone is aware of them, and these are firm. So let's take a look at the, the measures that we um, actually support. We encourage our registry participants to meet those, you know, PQRS reporting requirements. You have the opportunity to select PQRS measures, and in addition to those uh, PQRS measures, we have non-PQRS measures that are specific to um, our registries that you signed up for. These links um, will take you to actual measures lists. So this first one is related to PQRS measures. <laughs> and on this, on this uh, list, you will see your traditional PQRS measures. And all of we do have specifications on how to report each of these measures. And next, I want to make be sure that I show you our non-PQRS measures. Even though it's late in the year, I am getting quite a few questions about what is a non-PQRS measure and how do I report it. Um, these are specific to our ACR um, data registries, and we, okay, sorry about that. Looks like the link is not working. Let's try that again. So for the non-PQRS measures, um, they are specific to our different data registries. We do have five registries that can be used for PQRS reporting. And everything that starts with ACRAD is considered a non-PQRS measure. These measures are to be used in combination with your PQRS measures to meet the PQRS reporting requirements, the nine measures, three domains. 
Let's look at our measured data submission. As I mentioned, we have five different registries that can be used for PQRS reporting. Uh, we do collect data uh, for both PQRS and non-PQRS measures, but we collect them a little bit differently. You do have different ways that you can submit data to us. It can be manual, it can be an automated process, or it could be a, a data upload to our physician portals or our NRDR portals. As a reminder, on the screen we tell you which registries support, supports what data mechanism. Uh, so for example, your PQRS measures, you can either use web services or you can upload a data file to our system. We do have specif specifications that include instructions for populating the ACR templates that have already been provided. As a reminder, if you are working with a vendor to report data to ACR, please be sure to work with your, um, your vendors to be sure that they are meeting all of the data element requirements. Um, two two um, of the top vendors that are helping radiology clients meet PQRS measures participation is Nuance and NAGVIEW. So they should be actually helping you populate your data files, connecting your system with the NRDR. It's good if we spend some time, um, I just, as a QCDR, and because we have so many different registries, I just pulled out a few tips that I think will be helpful for everyone on today's call to be aware of. Your PQS measures, they must be submitted to our physician portal using our provided templates. If you are participating in the grid registry, we do ask that you submit um, your data at the exam level and not the facility level. That is a requirement by CMS. For the NMD and lung cancer screening registries, it's important to note that it, that data does rely on two years worth of data, um, essentially because there is a 12-month follow-up requirement for those particular measures. And so your, your reporting rate for those measures would be January 1 of 2015 until 2031 of 2016. So please be mindful of that. Regardless of when you signed up for the registry or got um, fully started and registered properly with the QCDR, you do need to give us data back to the top of the year. And for the PQRS measures, just one more reminder that the reporting uh, period is January 1, 2016 to December 31st. And set, uh, lastly, or second to last, if you are participating in the Dose Index Registry, um, be mindful that we are asking for all your data by December 31st, end of the year. And it does require triad software installation and mapping of your exam names and CT scanners. So, Please be aware that in order to make use of any of these measures, you have to uh, follow the data requirement. And then lastly, um, we are reminding you that you must submit data for 50% of all patients for the reporting year, or if you're doing group reporting, 50% of your group's patients. So uh, this next slide is referring to how do you actually view the QCDR measures that have been attributed to your physician. Uh, in prior slides, I mentioned the physician portal. Um, here are just some brief steps on how you actually uh, get logged in to the, to the physician portal. You will log into our NRDR platform with your correct credentials, whether you're a facility administrator, registry administrator, or even a physician user. Um, you click on PQRS measure participation tab on the left hand side of your screen and then you will click data collection and reports. On that page is what we consider our physician portal and there are multiple tabs to help you upload data, view your performance report and then actually the, there's a tab for you to select your measures for CMS submission. Uh, we can walk through those, those steps very quickly here so that everyone is aware of how to navigate the physician portal. And then lastly, coming soon, because 2016 is our first year where we're supporting GPROs, we have made some enhancements to our, um, to our physician portal where 
QCDR participants will be able to view measured data across all, for all of the physicians across your entire group. So what that means currently in the portal, you do have to search uh, each provider in order to view what measures, how many exams, and performance rates. But coming soon, you will be able to, to uh, see that information rolled up by your tax ID number. So we're excited about that. I'll spend just two minutes um, actually showing you our physician portal and how you would actually log in. So why I'm here, um, I am logged in as a facility administrator, and this is a test facility. So no one will be able to see any of uh, any realistic data. So once you log in with your credentials, you're going to select PQRS measure participation. It's the last item under registries. From here, you will. I have been logged out, so allow me to log back in. My apologies. And then from here under PQRS participation, you're going to see a number of menu items. You're going to click on data collection and reports. So this is my test facility. So I do have a home screen. It shows me who my physicians are and whether or not they are registered for the portal. Portal registration is required uh, for each physician account in order for you to upload any data, but we're not going to spend time on that right now. I want to show you all the performance reports. So right now, I'm going to search for um, my doctor by their name. As you see, you can enter their MPI number, or you can just start typing a few characters of their first name, and then they should appear. Let's click Select. On this tab, you will see 2016 as the current reporting year. And on this page, you will also see the 10. So if you have multiple 10s, each of your 10s will be fitted by an actual number. I do have, um, my first 10 only has PQRS measures. But my second 10, you can see that I have a combination of PQRS and non-PQRS measures. Um, ACRAD 15 is report turnaround time. So that, that's a specific measure that comes from our grid database. Um, so you should see this view. Right now, you can only see it for each position. But um, I would say in the next week or two, we will be expanding that so that you can see group 10 aggregates. And we'll be sure to send communication over. Um, we'll send all the facility administrators communication when that portal um, redesign or enhancement has been released. Um, important information for measures, you need to see your reporting rate, your performance rates, and whether or not you want to select that measure for, P for CMS submissions. So I just wanted to give you all a sense of the portal and how it operates. We're going to tap. Table, um, tabulate back over to the presentation. So about the physician portal, just a few caveats. All physicians must register to use the portal in order to upload any data files or view available measures. It's important. This is the only interface where you can see both your PQRS and non-PQRS measures that have been attributed to your providers. Um, in this window, you're able to view both PQRS and non-PQRS measures. Um, if you do upload any data files, we ask that you wait about 24 hours before the system um, gives you a status update of successful or rejected. It does take 24 hours. It refreshes every evening. Um, and then non-PQRS measures, um, just as a reminder of how they get to the portal, is that we attribute the measures based on your physician's MPI and your tax ID numbers that you provided to us during your registration process. Um, and, and then lastly, the performance report tab will be enhanced. It says a few weeks here, but we're actually um, planning to have it sooner than that so that um, sites that are doing GPRO can, can see an a easier view to, to look at performance rates across all physicians. So what you need to do now um, is verify that we have your physician's name and TIN information. That's very important. That's how we attribute measures. 
log into your physician portal and upload any PQRS data files. Um, we also need you to verify exam counts in the physician portal and select measures for CMS submission. If you um, remember from our timeline discussion, you're going to give us all the data by January 31st, but you have until February 19th or mid-February to actually select the measures that you want to report to CMS. So keep that in mind. That is a later action item. Focus right now on giving us all the data that we need. Uh, verify that you are meeting the PQRS reporting requirements. The requirements are different between an individual or a group. If you are doing group participation, each of your providers does not need to report nine measures in three domains. That's across your entire group. Um, and then if you are doing individual reporting, be sure that each of your doctors has nine measures or three domains. Our goal is to help you report um, information to be successful. But if you do have less than those reporting requirements, we will give you alternatives so that you are still successful for the 2016 reporting year. The next bullet, satisfy and report each measure. Um, there are detailed instructions attached to each of our measures. And so we want you to be aware of CPT code changes, how to report and CMS does have guidelines that say they must have a performance rate of greater than zero, unless zero percent is acceptable for inverse measures such as the probably benign or measure 146, where a lower performance rate indicates better um, quality care. But we do want you to avoid using AP modifiers where possible because that does give you a lower performance rate. And lastly, uh, we, we've mentioned this even our webinar from November, we spent a lot of time on how to navigate your feedback reports for each of the different registries as well as the QCDR. So we want you to um, continue to monitor your, your feedback reports that are in the NRDR and also make use of that performance um, tab in, in the portal. Uh, lastly, we do, um, if this uh, I have some, it seems like some people are still having some questions because there are a lot of different nuances with um, switching from claims reporting to registry. And so we do have a participation checklist to help you know everything that needs to happen between now and March 31st. Uh, so you can download that at any time. We also provided it to today um, on your screen under handout. So please do download that that checklist and save it to your favorites um, because at, once the webinar ends, I think the handout disappears. So go ahead and do that now. And then lastly, as I mentioned, this is our eighth webinar. We've tried to conduct them at least monthly since we um, began Open for Business uh, for 2016 reporting. We opened about April. So we're coming up on the end of the year. We do have two more scheduled webinars. Um, one for January 19th, and that's to help you get prepared for that January 31st deadline is a few more reminders, especially looking at the new performance report tabs and, and, and looking at your 10 aggregates. Um, we're going to be able to do a lot of that in January. And especially the more data you give us, the more um, we can help you and give feedback. And then lastly, we're going to wrap up all 2016 submissions. So we're going to have a kind of last minute webinar you can check in, kind of sort of like the office hours where I'm not going to talk. You guys are going to ask questions and we're going to try to answer them as much as possible. So save the date for those. You can register um, at any time for those. And please invite your team. Um, and then I think, you know, everyone has our contact information, but just in case anyone on the phone does not, here is our hotline as well as our email. And now I think it will be a good time to go ahead and open it up for questions. As we promised, we wanted to have at least 30 minutes for question and answer. Um, so do we have any in the, in the queue so far? So we've got a few questions that people have sent in. We've also got somebody with a raised hand. And just a reminder, if anybody wants to hit the raised hand icon, we can unmute you and you can uh, talk to us directly. Uh, so I'm going to start with some of the ones people have been in so far. Okay. Um, first question 
can grid submission uh, be submitted at the end of the year in one upload? <laughs> yes, we uh, for grid we the goal of using a registry. Yes, you can wait to the end of the year, but the goal is to submit multiple files throughout the year, um, primarily because the amount of exams that's going to be in there, that file is going to be very large. And if you do have a large file like that, we ask that you um, work with our registry team so that we can uh, time, time it so that maybe you can upload it in the evening or somewhere because just the file size will be very large. Um, that is an option, but we do encourage you to submit multiple data files. Definitely to, um, as soon as you submit the file, we will validate it immediately. So if anything in there is incorrect or accurate, your file will be rejected. And so we don't want you waiting to the, to the very last minute and then your file is rejected and we have to troubleshoot very quickly. Um, so do, I always encourage people to test out with real data. Um, go ahead and test and submit multiple files throughout. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, next question, uh, this comes from Jim Murray. Will facility administrators have a single user login to be able to access each physician login in the physician portal? Um, Jim, we currently do not have that feature. That's something that we would have to explore for 2017. Um, the reason for your physicians all being forced to, to have an account is a CMS mandate. And because physicians are being held accountable for all of the great work that we are doing and you are doing throughout the year, they, they just want to be sure that the physician does have some way of viewing their information. I have worked with facility administrators in the past and they, you know, they've kind of have different rules so that their physicians can send them emails and um, they can view their information for them. Uh, so it's just a, right now that's something we'll have to explore for 2017. Thanks. Um, we've got a couple questions here from Randy Lominick. Uh, the first one is, for GPRO, do we use the TIN for the group or the doctor? The uh, group TIN. It's the group, yeah, hi Randy, it would be the group's text ID number. Um, and what CMS does is they'll tribute um, all of your measures will will be viewed at the 10 aggregate level. So if you have 10 measures, every physician that builds that text ID number will get credit for that measure. Next, uh, I have submitted data to DIR and GRID, but nothing is showing up on my PQRS report. How do I tell the system which measures to put on my report again? Should they already be there? That's a great question. Um, part of what populates our physician portal with measure information is our, um, our quarterly QCDR feedback report. So our next feedback report for quarter three is scheduled to be released tomorrow. So whoever asked that question, I would ask that you log, um, allow us one more day before you log into your portal, and then your measures may appear. Um, essentially, we, we aggregate data quarterly, and when we get closer to um, January, we'll, we'll, we'll give you feedback more frequently than quarterly. Um, and then we use the doctor's MPI and tax ID information. I had a number of sites who added that information very late or made some changes, and that will affect um, how your measures appear in the portal. So no need to be alarmed right now. Give us about one more day. Um, our Q3 feedback reports will be released and updated in our portal. There's a few things that we have to do on our end um, to make sure that those measures appear. But if your account has a 10 in the MPI, um, we merge all the data across all of your facilities for all of your physicians um, for every 10. So it's, it's a bit of a process, but it should be available soon for you. Now, if we get to mid next week and you still don't see anything, then we have some that we need, would probably need to discuss via phone. Um, so we've got a couple people with hands raised. Uh, one of them, it doesn't look like they're they're actually dialed in, so we can't unmute you. That's Karen Agnello. Uh, you might have raised your hand by accident, Karen, but um, if you want to send us your question, you can just type that into the question box, and we'll get to it that way. Uh, we do have a hand raised from Amanda Bissig. 
Um, so Amanda, if you're ready, I'm going to unmute you real quick and you can ask your question. Oh, you just put your hand down. I guess that was a mistake. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so moving on to some of the questions we've got here. We've got a question from Lori. Can you do both claim submission and use the QCDR? You can, Lori. Um, that will be doing double the work, but with wherever you feel comfortable with. Um, now, for CMS purposes, they are only able to uh, look at one reporting. They'll look at both reporting mechanisms, claims independent, and they'll look at registry independent. And whichever one your group is most favorable under, um, then then you may avoid a negative payment adjustment. Um, so yes, by all means, because I know the Q starting with the registry and switching to a registry is a long um, administrative process, and so I I never hesitate to tell people to stop reporting claims, report claims for as long as you need to. Just know that CMS doesn't have a way to look at across both claims and reporting to see if you're successful. They'll take one or the other. Thanks. Now we got a question from Mark. Can we submit one file for all of our providers? Mark, that's a great question. Our PQRS templates. For our PQRS measures, we do we revise it a few months ago now, where we can now accept multiple MPIs in that one file. So please do uh, try to test out that feature uh, with uploading multiple positions at once. And the templates have not changed. It's a system. It's a system change where uh, before we only had one MPI per file was allowed. So that's a note for everyone. Please upload multiple positions, multiple measures in one file. Just not by, not at the end of the year. Thanks. <laughs> All right, next question is from Julie. If a registry administrator uploads data and are able to see that data, can any other registry administrator see it? See it? it depends, um, Julie, it depends on no, because each account has uh, one facility administrator one registry administrator per facility ID. So if you have a master account, and let's say you have child facility accounts also, you have to be logged into that account in order to see that specific account in order to see your physicians or your measures. Uh, feel free to, I'm not sure if that answered your question, but as a registry administrator, you should be able to see it, but uh, I'm not sure why you would have more than one registry administrator. Okay. Uh, we've got a couple questions from Jim here. Uh, first one, who can we contact regarding current status of vendor integrations for PQRS claims data feeds? Go ahead and contact nrdracr.org and we will vet it to our IT team that um, has been working very closely with vendors because they have a different platform for submitting data. They don't have a portal and they're using different templates. Um, and I would follow up with whatever vendor you are using. Like if you are using Nuance, um, do follow up with them first. Okay. Next question. Can I add a second TIN to each of my existing facilities? Yes. We do encourage you to um, add all of your TINs under the feature Manage Physician. Uh, let me actually see if I can go there now. Uh, so under Managed Physicians, let me, I may have gotten a little doubt, let's see. So right under Facility Management, um, there's a multiple tabs of Managed Physician Group 10 is what you're going to need to do. You would add your 10 number here. You would select all of the different facilities that read for that 10. And then you will assign it. Um, please only, please uncheck any registry that you're not using apply a start date and an end date if available. If the end date is not available, I would encourage you to leave it blank. And then this table will populate and you'll see all of your different TINs. So do do give us, if you have multiple TINs, you have to do that process for each of your TINs, one at a time. That was a good question. Thank you. Uh, next question comes from Ellen. We didn't do well with 2015 claims-based reporting and are now concerned that we will have trouble with 2016. Is it too late to register my physicians for QCDR? 
Unfortunately, it is too late to use the QCDR for 2016 reporting just because of all the different registry options and that you have to consider um, and the different files you have to upload and then just the administrative burden. Um, there is an alternative. So our registration deadline was um, end of October. So as an alternative, I can um, direct you to use a different qualified registry. There are different reporting requirements. If you send me an email, um, I can go ahead and give you that information um, on what's required. But the, the vendor that I've been sending people to that missed our deadline is PQRS Wizard. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that or not, but they are offering our radiologists a member discount of $199 for using their service. If you do use the PQRS wizard, you will not be able to use any of our um, registry-based measures, but by all means, you can um, report any of your PQRS measures. Um, any hands raised? No, not right now. We do have a few more questions oh, okay. here. Um, <clears throat> So we've, uh, we've got a question here from Karen. She's asking, do we need to report for all insurance companies or just Medicare? It's all payer. We collect all payer data. That's Medicare and non-Medicare patients. So if you have not coded any of your Medicare pa non-Medicare patients, you would need to do so before January 31st. Uh, she had a follow-up question, too. And uh, I'm assuming this means her group is reporting as a GPRO. Um, she's asking, what if we do not have nine measures that apply to each of our radiology physicians? If you do GPRO, you just need nine total across all of your physicians. So if you have 13 physicians, you only need nine, nine total measures. If you have a doctor that has less than, less than you know, one measure or two measures or maybe even no measures, um, that's the benefit of group reporting. It simplifies it for you. Everyone gets safeguarded from the penalty adjustment if you have nine measures, three domains, and two outcomes if available. Thank you. Um, next question is from Walter. He asks, so if I'm reporting one or two measures for each of my 50 physicians, and in aggregate for our GPRO, we will report at least nine different measures across three domains with at least two outcome measures reported, can I assume each EP will be recognized by CMS as successfully reporting for PQRS in 2016? Yes, because it's it's not the CMS will not analyze each individual provider. Every provider under your tax ID number will get credit for the measures as long as it's nine distinct measures across three domains. So they would be successful and they will have probably more than nine given that you have 50 dots. And even though we haven't talked about it on this webinar and prior webinars, that's, we talked about the importance of knowing if you're individual group reporting early on in the year so that you can determine which registries you need to sign up for and how many measures, you're, how many PQRS measures you need to report. So um, those are good questions. Thanks. So we have a few other questions that were all kind of similar to the once we just answered the G Pro, yeah, okay. we have um, one from uh, Nirmala, and I was asking some uh, for some clarification from Nirmala. But uh, not all RADs qualify for nine measures via claim-based submission. What should be done? If you're using a QCDR, it is required that you have nine measures, three domains, because you're using PQRS measures in addition to the registry-based measures. It is very hard if you don't have IR doctors to find nine measures. Um, I would recommend for your for that particular situation that you should use the PQRS wizard um, that I referred to earlier for someone who missed our deadline. They do have different reporting requirements, and there is a process called MAV, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because you all will fall asleep or log off, um, but there's a process for them to um, Determine, did your provider report every measure possible if they have less than measures, less than nine measures in three domains? 
which means if, if your doctor only reads mammography and they only have two PQRS measures to report, then they would be failed successful, they would pass the MAB, and they would avoid a negative payment adjustment. So PMS is, um, is they have the MAB process. Some I'm getting mixed messages as far as people who have gotten negative payment notifications for 2015. Um, they weren't successful with MAV or they didn't select the right amount of measures. If that does happen, there's an informal review process that you can do later on. But I would definitely recommend not using the QCDR and using the PQRS wizard. Uh, we are in the business of offering you alternatives. We want you to be successful, and we know that QCDR is not right for every situation. Uh, so we've got a request for some clarific clarification from Lori. Uh, we have only done claim status reporting for Medicare and not the Medicare Advantage plan. Are you saying that we need to assign PQRS to all claims now, not just Medicare? Yes, it's Medicare and not Medicare patients. Um, and going forward, today's presentation is focused just on 2016 reporting, but for 2017 reporting, regardless if you use PQRS Wizard or, or the QCDR, every registry must collect all payer data. So we think we were the guinea pigs. They first required QCDRs to do that. Now they're going to require all registries to provide all patient data for 2017 reporting. So it's good to start that process now. Uh, Here's a good question. Can a group report individually for 2016 and easily convert to group reporting for 2017? Yes. Um, good news. Uh, to be a GPRO currently, there was a, a short window where you had to fill out a registration with CMS. It was between April and June, so if you missed that June deadline, you were locked out from reporting as a group. For 2017 reporting, you have the entire year to decide if you want to do individual or group reporting. And essentially, you will not have to register with CMS. You would just let whoever your registry vendor is, if it's the QCDR, you would let us know that you want to do group reporting. So you can make those decisions um, more fluid throughout the year. It's not locked into a specific time frame. Uh, that's all the questions we have right now. If anybody else has anything they want to ask, go ahead and type it into the question box. Um, How are we on time? Oh, yeah, uh, we've got 15 minutes. We have about 15 minutes. Please, I know there are more questions. I've been getting several calls, <laughs> um, myself as well as the team here, just on different questions pertaining to PQRS reporting and the CMS submission deadline. So now is your time to ask. If you do not have a specific question, um, you can also feel free to provide us feedback on what's working, not working, what's impossible to do. We we need that feedback so that we um, can adjust uh, for 2017 reporting. Uh, we do have a couple more questions. Uh, another one from Nirmala asking, if RADs do not qualify for non-measures, are you suggesting a measure group via PQRS wizard? So, um, I am suggesting PQRS wizard. Through the wizard, you can report individual measures or a measures group. If you are interested in reporting the measures group, you have to look at those requirements. Um, the, the measures group that's relevant to radiology is the OPIR measures group, optimizing patient exposure to ionizing radiation. It's related to CT exams, and you do need to particip be participating in the ACR's dose index registry to satisfy measure group reporting. Um, so if you're not in the dose index registry, I would recommend that you just submit individual measures and not do a measures group. Thanks. Um, Julie had a clarification on her earlier question. Uh, she meant to ask if a registry administrator uploads data, can a facility administrator see the uploaded data in the master account? Yes. Yeah. They should be able to see all files for the master and the child. Um, and a question from Lori here. So those exams that are reported in the registry and carried over to QCDR may actually be counted as fulfilling a measure if applicable? I think I'm not sure of the question, but if you do give us data, um, to, for the non-PQRS measures, yes, you can use those for PQRS reporting. Might need some clarification on that question. 
Uh, Julie is telling us that uh, her facility administrator is unable to see the data for their master account, so I'll have her send the uh, yeah, go ahead and send us an email and we'll try to troubleshoot. In that email, make sure you include your facility ID um, so that we can, I can log into your system very easily and, and see what's missing. Um, the facility administrator has the highest privilege, higher than a registry administrator. So it should actually be the other way around. She should see your file. You may not, as a registry administrator, be able to see the files, but um, uh, your facility administrator definitely should. The, the facility administrator and the registry administrator, just to clarify, has the permission to upload PQRS files to our system. And if that's not working, we can troubleshoot. Um, okay, uh, that's all we have so far. So if we maybe want to give it another minute or two and see if anybody else has anything. Sure. Oh, we just got one. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, we've got one from Doris. Hi, um, Doris. Hey, Doris. <laughs> For 2016, we're reporting PQRS via claims. We have been uploading data to the registry si since September. Will the data from the registries be submitted to CMS as well for 2016, uh, as well as claims? No. So when you do when you do claims and registry reporting, the registry needs a complete full year's worth of data for you to be successful. So although you signed up and got started in September, you do need to give us information from January 1 um, through December 31st. That's kind of what I was trying to mention earlier. Maybe it wasn't clear. Claims, you have to be either all successful under claims and all successful under registry or just successful under registry. CMS doesn't have a way to combine claims and registry reporting. How you do that is actually uploading your PQRS files to our system, and that, that's using the ACR template. Uh, we have one question about the GPRO registration deadline. Uh, I'm assuming, I'm not sure if they're asking about 2016. If it's 2016, that deadline was in June, so that's no longer an option for 2016 reporting. Mm -hmm. But for 2017, there is no deadline. There is no deadline. There is no deadline. There is no deadline. You just let us know we'll have an option. We we'll have an opportunity to capture whether or not you're G Pro. Currently, um, you let us know if you're G Pro under your Manage Physician 10 page. Um, so, so that's where you would do that for 2017. Uh, we have a question from Randy here. We started DIR in October, so we won't have a full year of data. Will it submit what it has available? It will submit what it has available, but remember your reporting rate is 50% or greater of all exams. So um, you may have to work with your PAC administrator to submit um, data retrospective to, um, I'm blanking on the date he just said, <laughs> but you have to submit data retrospective, you have to get the information from your PAC system. And we have, we have someone on our team that specializes in the dose index registry. I'm not going to call their name out. Um, but go ahead and email nrdr at acr.org. Be sure to, to give specifics that it's the dose index registry and you feel like you don't have all your exams accounted for, and, and they will assist you with that. Uh, we have um, uh, one more question. Did GPROs have to submit via registry? Yes, it is required for G pros. Um, you cannot do claim submission. A registry is required during the registration process. If you were, if you did indicate you were a G pro, part of your application you had to tell them if you wanted to use a QCDR or a qualified registry. We sent out email communication to all of our G pros not too long ago, just asking that you verify that you selected the correct registry option um, in your application. Um, it's too late to make changes now. If you, whatever decision you made on your registration application, you are locked into that for the entire year. All right. Still getting some questions rolling in. Um, okay, this one's from Randy. He says, for GRID, I initially thought I had to submit only CMS patients. Later, I went back and submitted the full year and deleted the other uploads because there would be duplicated records. Is that the right process? Uh, 
He's wondering, because reportings are done quarterly, will it go back and pick up the prior loaded quarters? Is this grid or DIR? Uh, grid. Oh, great. Yes, the, file, the files will refresh. So as I mentioned um, prior, our Q3 results will be um, available in the portal tomorrow, um, tomorrow sometime. And I believe you can log in um, to NRDR, select the grid tab, and then you can view your aggregate data there as well just to, to verify that we have the information. Um, but our system does refresh. We do not um, count duplicative exams or anything like that. Okay. Now, don't make those changes after tomorrow because then we won't be able to pick it up until quarter four. That's it for questions right now. Okay. But we might get another one. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this is helpful. This is meant to be um, a refresher course for a lot of you. We hope no one is still in the registration and agreement phase. Uh, we hope people are actually starting to submit their data and view their measures in the portal. I know there are a number of facilities that have not been able to view their measures. Um, and most of it is a timing thing. Um, if you make changes after we release our quarterly reports, we don't capture it until the next quarter. Now going forward, because I said January 31st through, Feb through February 19th is going to be a critical time. We are going to be actually consulting you at that point. We're going to send out email notifications for all of the groups. Um, you're going to know which positions are successful or not successful, what reporting rates are met or not met, and then you're going to use that to actually select your measure. So we're going to be giving you more ongoing feedback. It will not be quarterly. Um, starting January is when we're planning to actually refresh our data more, I think, um, every other week. So um, it will not be quarterly, so no need to panic there. You'll have more than enough time um, to se select your measures with the right amount of data available to you. I think that's it. Thank you for those who are actively engaged in this process. These are some very great questions. Um, and as a reminder, we talked about the Q3 aggregates coming tomorrow. And then the physician portal, we are making some enhancements so that you can uh, view your all of your measures and your exam counts at the group level. So stay tuned for um, email notifications about when that will be released. Thanks, and I normally would say happy Friday, but today is only Thursday. <laughs> but thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to um, join this educational session. We will make available the presentation slides and the webinar recording on our website. And just before I wrap up, if anyone's looking for any QCDR-related information, visit us on the web at www.acr.org forward slash QCDR. Everything you need is there. Templates, checklists, timelines, etc.